Hello, my name is Dr. Obafemi Oyewumbi, and I'm taking you a course in auditing that is labeled principles of auditing. Principles of auditing. And the topic that we're looking at today is titled Accounting Records. Accounting Records. I invite you to subscribe to this particular YouTube channel and of course like it and share it. And of course, make comments as you deem fit, because we're going to be discussing, you know, together at this particular point in time. I welcome you once again. Thank you for subscribing. All right. And uh, let me share the screen so that we can um, continue um, this particular topic. Okay, here we go. Like principles of auditing. The, the, that's the, 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 the course. And of course, the topic is accounting records. Accounting records. Let's look at the learning objectives. Learning objectives for this course. Um, at the end of this lecture, it is expected that students would learn about financial statements, understand the types of financial statements, appreciate types of statutory records to be maintained by organizations or entities, understand why auditors are interested in statutory books, appreciate the responsibilities of auditors, I mean directors concerning financial um, statements. Okay, those are the learning objectives. So let's begin by looking at um, um, annual financial uh, statements, annual financial statement. All right, so we have as defined here, financial statements are the accounting reports uh, in respect of the economic activities of an enterprise prepared periodically and usually at the end of the, every financial year. Financial statements can be referred to as the reports through which the entities communicate financial information to their owners and various other external parties, including investors, tax authorities, government, and employees, and so on. Financial statements are written records that illustrate the business activities and the financial performance of a company part time. So when we talk about annual financial statement, we're looking at reports that are usually prepared either on a monthly basis or month, you know, quarterly basis, but usually at the end of every financial year. Okay, for the purpose of communicating financial information to users of those particular um, records or information. All right, and these financial statements, as they are prepared, okay, they are also delivered and given to um, you know, auditors for the purpose of making their opinions, you know, on the on 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 the status of the company, you know, at the end of you know the financial uh, year. Let's look at this annual financial statement. Let's look at the components. Okay, number one is statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. This is a picture of the financial status of an entity at a point in time. At the top, we have the assets. Okay, assets are identified, they are reviewed, and of course, we have the volume and the value of each asset. But this is closely also followed by the shareholders' you know, equity. That talks about the liabilities and the shareholders of um, the shareholders' equities of the of the company. All right, so that's talking about statement of financial you know position. It states and it shows the financial position of a particular company at any given time. At any given time. Let's look at the second one. The second one is called income statement. Income statement. This usually covers a period, such as a quarter. It could be monthly. It could be weekly, depending on the uh, the necessity. I mean, the the, the 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 schedule of the management. Okay, so it could be per month. It could be quarterly. It could be per annum. But of course, it is expected that at, at the end of every year, that every company should have an idea of the profit that they have made over time you know, in the cost or the period, whether the month or the week or even the year. So it defines the profitability of the company from an accounting, you know, perspective, accrual and matching perspective. The income statement has such lines, accounting lines as revenue, the revenue, the cost of sales, the gross profit, operating expenses, and the net effect of this will determine the net income of the company you know, at the end of that particular, or for that particular period. Revenue talks about the amount of amount of money that the company has been able to earn by or carrying out some activities. And the cost of sales talking about the different um, direct costs 
that the company has incurred for the purpose of generating you know revenue and of course we talk about operating expenses those are expenses um uh, you know uh, opes operating expenses that the company uh has sent by club point time giving point like that is you know that they spend money that they spend on you know other on so many um uh, items for them to be able to generate you know the revenue that they have been able to make so the third one is called cash flow statement cash flow statement this defines the cash position of the company it speaks to the amount of cash the entity collects from its customers and pays to its creditors over a particular period it's also ascertained whether it keeps enough for investment and uh, you know uh, growth purposes okay so that is the cash flow statement usually has three components cash from operations cash used in investing and then cash from uh, financing all right. So when we talk about cash from operation, it talks about the net effect of revenues and expenses that have been collected or paid during the year. Cash used for I um, mean in investing. This talks about um, um, non-current assets that support the business, you know, such as properties, plant and equipment, and business acquisition. And cash from financing from financing talks about cash or transactions relating to shares or debt. You must know that you know companies in most cases they raise funds either by borrowing or by issuing shares for the purpose of, you know, generating um, enough cash for the purpose of running, you know, the business as it were. Okay, so let's go and talk about statutory books. Statutory books. What are statutory books? These are financial records relating to all legal and statutory matters kept by the company. Official records relating to all legal and statutory matters kept by the company. You must know that a company is a legal entity on its own. It's a legal entity, it's a person, it can stand on its own. All right, it could be sued, and of course, also sued or you know, um, uh, people. That's what we're talking about. So every official record relating to the legal and statutory records are you know being maintained by the company, they're being referred to as statutory books. They're usually kept in the company's registered office. Okay, company's registered office. Every company has a registered office. Of course, it's possible for them to have operating um, addresses, but of course, they have a they have registered offices where it is you know record them. You go to when you do a search, you see the company's registered you know office in their um, in their legal uh, documents. So they're usually kept in the company's registered office, and the company's and Alliance Act of 2020 requires that the company should keep the following books. So let's so look at some of the books that are to deem or that's termed statutory books. Number one is register of directors. Register of directors. A company is required to keep a register of directors and secretaries, section 318, 318 of Kama 2020. All right. It is required that every company should have a register of directors and, sec and, and secretaries. This company shall keep a register of its directors, which shall contain required particulars of each person who is a director of the company. Registers shall be kept available for inspection at the company's registered office or any other places of which the registrar must be notified. The register must shall be opened, shall be opened, please, uh, for inspection. For those who need it, shall be opened for inspection for those who need it. Of course, appropriate circumstances will be given where there is a default in respect of this provision. So let's continue uh, with, uh, with um, director's um, register. According to section 319 of Kama, a company's register of directors shall contain the full name and or any former name or names of the director or each director, the service address, nationality, business occupation, date of birth, phone number, email. These are the information that are required to be maintained for each director. Okay, of the company. Okay, let's go ahead and let's still look at um, uh, you know, another one. Number two, a register of charges, a register of charges, whether fixed or floating, starts uh, according to section two one six, section two hundred and sixteen of Kama. This is a list of all charges specifically affecting the properties of the company and all floating charges on the undertaking of any property of the company. Now, when we talk about register of charges, we are referring to um, uh. Assets that have been lent, assets that have been, you know, mortgaged for the purpose of maybe taking a loan. So if there's any lien, if there's any uh, charge related to a specific asset or property of the company, it must be disclosed. There must be a register. 
of such items, of such properties. Okay, a register of charges must be maintained and kept at registered office of the company as well. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this next one. The next one talks about register of debenture, register of debenture holders, if any, section 218 to 219 uh, is, 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 uh, relates to this. Okay, relates to this. Any company which has issued debentures shall maintain a register of the holders which shall contain the following the names and addresses of the debenture holders, the principal of the debentures held by each of them, the amount or the highest amount of any premium payable on redemption of the debenture, debentures, issue price of the debenture, and amount paid on the issue price. Date on which the name of each person is was entered on the register as a, as a debenture order. Date on which each person ceased to be a debenture order. You know, when we're talking about debenture, we're talking about debt capital, okay? Debt capital. They maintain either a floating or fixed charge. So now what it means is that um, a register must be a, a register of um, debenture holders that will be maintained uh, you know, in the in the in the um, in the registered office as well. Okay, so that talks about that's a register of debentures. Number four, let's go to the fourth one. Minutes of proceedings, minutes of proceedings, except for any company with a single member. It is expected that every company shall cause minutes of all proceedings to be written or to be entered in a book kept for that purpose. Number one is meetings that, that you term as general meetings, meetings of directors and meetings of management and audit committees. They are expected to be maintained, you know, you know, to, uh, you know to maintain so that a reference will be made, you know, to them whenever anybody, you know, requires it. So it is important that every company has minutes of proceedings. These minutes of the proceedings must be signed by the chairman or his representative. Minutes are expected to be maintained and kept in the registered office of the company. Another statutory book that must also be maintained is called an index register of members or shareholders. So that means that every member, those that are shareholders of the company, the register of must be maintained, you know, for them. Every company having more than 50 members shall, unless the register of members is in such a form as constitutes in itself an index, keep an index of the names of the members of the company. So because it's a company and it's limited by shares, all the shareholders must be registered. There must be a list, there must be a, there must be a, a register of members and shareholders of such a company. So it's important that these, you know, these records are maintained. There are statutory books. Every company, will, they, they are all expected to maintain uh, uh, such, a, such, such books. Because there are five that were mentioned here, you know, thus far. I, I, I believe that when you go through this video, over and over again, you'll be able to understand and appreciate the different um, books that are meant to be uh, to be kept or maintained by a company. Now, auditors are auditors have interest in statutory books, so they are not being maintained for the fun of it. They are the number one; they are statutorily maintained, and of course, there are interest that auditors have concerning these books. And what are these interests? Okay, auditors are interested in statutory books being properly maintained because they are directly concerned with the accounts. They are directly concerned with the accounts. Decisions are taken, minutes are, minutes, minutes are held, and of course, minutes are kept. And where decisions are taken that you know, have impact on, um, on the records of um, or the status of financial dealings of the company, it is expected that the auditors will be interested in such you know, books. When we talk about register of, uh, register of, um, of, um, of uh, directors, we talk about shareholders. We talk about the minutes. They are interested. The auditors are usually interested in these books because they are connected with the account that he or she is auditing. They are number two. They audit evidence to be used in verifying detailed items in the accounts. For example, the total share capital shown by the sum of the individual shareholdings in the register of members must agree with the share capital recorded in the books of account. It's simple. So if you want to say you have X, Y, Z number of shares in the uh, you know, paid up capital, you want to find, I want to leave, you know, uh, uh, refer to um, uh, register of members to know whether they exist 
to know who and who, you know, are the owners of those shares. So it's important that mm -hmm. these records are kept so that the auditors will be able to have, you know, um, be able to refer to them, you know, as they carry out the, their, their, their assignment. Failure to maintain records of any sort casts doubt upon the accuracy and reliability of the records generally. So it's important that minutes are kept, where decisions are taken. You can always refer to them to say, okay, the company has said we're moving on to do this, and then let us look at who and who sat to approve such a move. So it's important for records to be kept. So auditors are interested because they're directly connected, concerned with the accounts. Again, their audit evidence, okay, to be used in verified detailed items of the account. And of course, if they don't maintain it, then it casts doubt because it will now be like who authorized or who um, who 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 who, and who decided that things should be done the way uh, they, they were carried out. All right. So let's look at director's responsibilities. Director's responsibilities. Okay, when it comes to accounts. The company at that time, Alamatas Act 2020, Karma 2020, defines a director to include any person occupying the position of a director. Any person occupying the position of a director or labeled as a director. A director is a person appointed by the company to direct and manage the company's business. A, any person appointed by the company to direct and manage the company's business. Now, they usually come together to function as a board, all the directors. When they gather together, they form a board. The board of directors are in charge of the management of company's business. They make the strategic and operational decisions of the company and are responsible for ensuring that the company meets its statutory obligations. You know, talking about the responsibilities of directors. I'm just looking, just looking at directors now. Okay, so anybody who has been appointed by a company to direct or to manage a company's business is a director. They usually function as a board and they are in charge of the management of the business. They make decisions, strategic and operational decisions, and they are also responsible for enforcing, you know, such, uh, 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 you know, such um, obligations or such, um, um, you know, decisions that they are made. And in most cases, they gather together, they, move, they come together and participate, you know, board meetings that will enable the board to reach decisions and make sure that the company's obligations are well fulfilled. The directors are effectively the agents of the company, appointed by the shareholders, appointed by the shareholders to manage the company's day-to-day -day affairs. So when we, talk, when we refer to board directors, these are agents of the company, okay, appointed usually, as it were, by the shareholders, okay, and they are directed and giving response to manage the companies from one day to another day to another day to another day. And the basic rule is that directors should act together as a board, okay, they should act together as a board. That's what it means. But of course, it's possible for that to also de delegate some of their responsibilities to so management um, uh, 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 people who are also uh, called management in the in the, in the the various organizations. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. It's, it's not it's not that every director must be involved in day to day run of the of the organization, depending on the status. It's not impossible. It's not impossible that we have some that will be involved on day to day on the daily, uh, you know, transactions. You know, as they make decisions, but it's also possible for some of them not to be, you know, um, even visible. But of course, they are directors of the company. In such in such a case, they direct. They are giving their delegated their authority, you know, to people who will carry out those authority, those responses on their uh, behalf. So let's look at the final part of uh, this particular uh, you know, lecture right, even right now. Let's look at the responsibilities as it as they relate to financial. Statements. What are the responsibilities of directors as they relate to financial statements? Number one, the preparation and fair presentation of financial statements. The preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements of the company, which give a true and fair view of the state of affairs or of the profit for that period, following the applicable financial reporting framework. Here we're saying that it is the responsibility of the directors to ensure that financial statements are prepared and they are fairly presented, okay? And these statements must give a fair and true view of the state of affairs of the company and the profits or loss. And of course, they are usually also used, I mean, they also follow applicable financial reporting framework. Framework here talks about whether it is, um, you know, all the different um, standards that they have been able to, you know, follow, all right? So let's look at the second one. The design 
implement and maintain appropriate internal controls. They design, they implement and maintain appropriate internal controls that are relevant for the purpose of preparing a fair presentation of those financial statements. Because it is, it is very important that every financial statement is free from material misstatement. Okay, free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error. So they ensure that they have a well placed, uh, a well informed, or you know what I say, system of internal controls in the in each organization or in the organization, so that they are able to uh, have information that is free from material misstatements. Number three, to provide auditors, we're talking about their responsibilities here, to provide the auditors with all information relevant to the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statement, such as records, documentation, and other matters. So, and then of course, they must grant unrestricted access to persons within the entity from whom the auditors deem fit, deems fit to obtain, you know, audit evidence. So these are the responsibilities as they relate to financial statement meaning that they are ultimately responsible for the financial statement to be audited by the auditors auditors of the company. I believe that you have been able to learn one of the things you know, today about this particular topic, talking about accounting you know, um, uh, records, and of course, this particular topic in auditing. I want to believe that you have learned one of the things. Now go over this over and over again. Once again, I would invite that you um, you, 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 you subscribe to this particular channel, you like it, and of course, make your comments as you deem fit. Thank you very much for being part of uh, the lecture or for having viewed this particular video. God bless you. Thank you.